Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dark Asylum podcast, the first episode in the season of love. It is the season of love, February. And speaking of love, people I love who I want to make love with, I want to stick my finger in, we have darkness. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. <laughs> And uh, with all the uh, love going on, Big Vicious is out making love to numerous supermodels today. So he is not able to make it, so you're stuck with us. Yes, the, uh, the Hawaiian Tropics bus came by and he said, yes, I will actually be <laughs> your oil boy. And now that's what he's dealing with. <laughs> right park bench at the right time, that's all I gotta say. But yeah, Exactly. The oh. uh, best part about this now mm -hmm. is that I could tell Big V stories, and he he won't be here to tell you tell people if I'm lying, or he won't be here to dispute him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and so we we could play a game. Is that uh, is it really uh, something that happened or not? Take your choice, <laughs> but then not tell anybody. We'll just come up with some random shit, and then we'll tell some real ones. Put it up to the viewers or the listeners to uh, determine whether or not it was real or not. <laughs> I got one. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, the other day I was coming home, and uh, I was coming home from work, and Big V was on my couch, naked from the waist down, already his legs just, like, up in the air, right? His butthole was fully dilated. And then, like, I, like, asked him what the hell he was doing in my house. And every time I tried to, to talk to him, he just, he just go, shh, 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 shh. And, like, okay. that kept going on for a while. Like, every, every, like, ten minutes, I'd ask him. Or every minute, every ten minutes. It's absurd. Until, like, at the last, like, he, he was, like, cold staring at me. Icy cold eye contact. Every time I tried to ask him, what do you, what's going on? He just, shh, shh, shh. Until, like, I just hear a. Okay. A small little <laughs> And now I'm mad because I'm just like you drove an hour and a half out of your way, broke into my house and sat here for what seemed like hours just so you could bare ass fart on my couch and it just wasn't even worth it. <laughs> Fuck your couch. <laughs> <laughs> it had no friction. There <laughs> It's like throwing a hot dog down the hallway. It's, it's open breezeway. Shit. Yeah, Ever since he... Like, it was just like he, he just fucking... He, he spread butt cheeks and he was just fully dilated. Which is horrible in itself to look at because the red hair is everywhere. <laughs> it took so long you just like went in and made a sandwich and then came back out and just kept watching. It was like a fucking train wreck. He's just grunting and staring at me. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, there, fuck you, Zach. I told you I would. <laughs> you, you remember that time we got, you remember that time we got drunk in Washington, D.C. and convinced Big Vicious to pretend to be Mitch McConnell's dad? <laughs> <laughs> that was good times, yeah. <laughs> That was a good time. We like, we go, <laughs> we go, hold on. <laughs> we go and we, we, we find Mitch McConnell's house, right? And Big Vicious just, <laughs> just starts banging on the door. And then, like, he, he puts his mouth, like, the, the letter slot on the door, he opens it and just puts his mouth to it and just starts screaming into the house come on let's play catch and all the while he's just pushing slow cooked corned beef through the slot right <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> that was the end of the story that was it <laughs> that was it yeah we're done now that's it. that was all I had alright <laughs> that, that was it we almost got arrested I don't know well you know I, people are getting bold with with uh the uh government officials there's somebody that goes and just randomly shits in nancy pelosi's yard 
it's like, all right, cool. If that's your your thing, yeah, man, was, go. Was, I'm not saying it was us, but <laughs> I'm not saying that was us, but I am saying that it happened on the same weekend we were drunk in Washington, Washington D.C. Oh, this would be in San Francisco, so. Yeah, which is which is so closer. Right. It's closer than Washington D.C. for us. So. <laughs> and we convinced uh, we convinced Big Vicious to pretend that he's a lawn gnome, and he <laughs> ended up shitting in her yard. Just brick right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, fuck. Yeah, you can be drunk enough, you can convince him pretty much to do anything. It's it's insane. Yeah, but you know. So, uh, how was your week? You actually, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it. Um, said you did, so I don't want to pry. Oh, that? Oh, no, that, that's fine. I, my weekend, my week's just been busy. I, my uh, grandma had surgery, but, you know, she's a tough old uh, Irish lady. So she had, like, her back, from what I could tell, her back is basically, like, plastic now, her lower back. Jeez. Oh, and she got that, and she was just, because, you know, she's, she was a corrections officer for, like, 30 years. And that shit kind of wears on you. Like, she's had neck surgery, back surgery, both knees worked on. And she's, like, she had surgery, and, like, later that day, when I came to visit her, she was walking like, like nothing happened. Oh, wow. Was it, I mean, was she having problems walking before, and now she's, like, dancing the jig or what? Pretty much, yeah. Nice. It's good, like... Because it was just, like, you... Okay. It's like, those things where, like, you don't... Sorry. It's like those things where, like, you don't... You just kind of learn to live with the pain, and then once it's gone, you're like, holy shit, that was holding me back. Yeah, I was uh, listening to the, the Undertaker Joe Rogan podcast. He said that right after he got that hip surgery, yeah. when they put everything in, he was like, oh, my God. Like, right after, he could just walk. Like things were, mm -hmm. he had a little bit of a gait in his step, but it was just instantaneous better, you know? So there's no adjustment period or anything like that, which is good. No, I mean, no, it does what it's friend. supposed to do. Are you fucking eating? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Look, you caught me around dinner time. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> Can't be any worse than V fucking <laughs> breathing into the mic, so. Well, that's good. That's you good. Either listen to me with a mouthful of food every now and then, or you gotta listen to a big V mouth fucking microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my relative in the hospital is doing well, bored out of his mind, and uh, we just got word today that he got a roommate. Oh, I can only imagine. And he was really hoping for a roommate because, you know, he's just bored. <laughs> and he reported to us that he has a, I think it was a, he said, Yaki Indian that came, that screams in foreign languages, cuss words, and then screams at all hours into <laughs> his phone to his family, which he's fighting with. So, yeah, <laughs> it's just, just random. That is that's the uh, best roommate to have. Yeah. So we're working on getting him headphones. <laughs> he can... I guess in this room, <laughs> they have uh, the remote control that's got the little plug so you can listen with audio cables, which is nice. So oh, we'll get to him. We'll get it to him and he won't have to deal with it so much. Fucking... It was better than like having a roommate with like night terrors or something. Yeah, or one that like you, you go to sleep and then like you just wake up out of a dead sleep and they're staring over you, at you from like, like what are you what are you doing? Nothing. Uh, okay. <laughs> just, just a rock hard erection. Yeah. But so, um, we'll get the depressing news out of the way right now, because we got like uh, an oh, absorbent man. amount of deaths this week. So, rest in peace, Hank Aaron, Cloris Leachman, Larry King, and Dustin Diamond, also known as Screech, or Samuel Screech Powers, if you're a 90s kid. Uh, that's all I got. Did you hear of any others? No. No. Yeah. That was just, wow. So, yeah. I see Cloris Leachman every year, 
whenever I watch Bad Santa and get you some sandwiches is like a a known uh, a known uh, whatever the hell you want to call it, phrase around my house. <laughs> it's <laughs> you okay? You okay, honey? Like she just bangs her knee or something. I'm like, do you need me to get you some sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. So, of course, Leachman hit me kind of hard, but, you know. Um, we we do Cloris Leachman Cloris. Hello? Hello? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it was just me, but it went, we did so, we do Cloris Leachman And then the audio just went out. <laughs> You sounded like Jimmy from uh, South Park. <laughs> no, we do. Uh, we do Cloris Leachman quotes, but it's from uh, Beer Fest. Ah, uh, yes, Beer Fest is another good one of hers, and uh, Beverly Hillbillies, and you know all that good stuff. So, um, oh, Larry oh, King. I forgot she was in Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, yeah, she's grandma, dude. She's grandma and everything. <laughs> I mean, towards the end of her career, but you know, <laughs> she just seems like one of those cool she's ladies. Of people like Larry King, who's always been old. Well, yeah, I don't. I honestly don't remember whenever she hasn't been. It's like uh, the Golden Girl. That's still Betty White. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't. I've seen pictures of her when she's young, yes. but I've never known her to be anything but the Betty White from the Golden Girls. <laughs> she's always been old to me. It's like, yeah, it's like um, Cloris Leachman, Larry King, and Ric Flair have always been old. Yeah. <laughs> I started watching wrestling in the 80s, and Ric Flair was old then. <laughs> like, yeah. His body was just, like, melting from the get-go. I can't, I don't, don't think I've ever seen a picture of him where he wasn't old. So, you know, <laughs> he just... You haven't seen, like, uh, his, you haven't seen his rambling Rickus Rhodes days? No, no, I haven't. I have to look that up. <laughs> you do, because he's like, does not look like the same person. He's all fucking huge and jacked. Really? Interesting. Because, like I said, I've never seen yeah, him as like, anything when but. He start... When he started training wrestling, he was like 330. Oh, damn. That's insane. How tall is he? I think he's about six one, six two. Jesus. See, the heaviest I've ever been is three hundred, but that was after I broke my leg and was unable to walk for like six months. So, yeah, that's not much of a comparison. <laughs> yeah, his was muscle, mine was not. <laughs> it, was, it was hot pockets. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Whatever I could get my wife to throw at me from the other room. So I was laid up in a bed. <laughs> she, I wasn't even, I slept in my office on a blow up mattress. <laughs> it was so terrible. <laughs> but, Why? yeah. Because I just. Does your wife hate you that much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all like, yeah, she does. <laughs> So, yeah. It almost made me spit out my water. <laughs> there was a funny incident when I was uh, laid up with my, my leg was broken and I had to go to the bathroom and I just needed like some help because I didn't have crutches yet. I wasn't supposed to be walking on it. And I was like, can you just like help get some stuff out of the way and help? And she's like, no, here. And she brings me a cup. And I was like, what the fuck? She's like, just piss in the cup. I'll go, I'll go pour it in the sink. And I'm like, what the hell? And I look at the cup and it's like, a Roddy Piper Slurpee cup. I'm like, no, no, get me a different cup. This, I will not disrespect this man's spirit by pissing in a. I was out of it on drugs, but so that situation might have been a little bit different than I remember now. But yeah, I wouldn't piss in a Roddy Piper cup. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. This we're already on wrestling. <laughs> did, did you see uh, the Rumble? Um, I saw bits and pieces of it. I didn't get to see the whole thing. Okay. I watched the whole thing from I start did. to finish pre-show. I got all into it because I love the Royal Rumble. Um, it was actually the first That's event the I saw. I, I watch anymore. Yeah. The Rumble and Mania is pretty much what I, no, I'm I for. 
fuck, I can't even watch Mania anymore. It's turned into a full-time job with the fucking 10-hour shows or some shit. Yeah, two days and everything else. <laughs> fuck me. But my, the highlight for me was uh, Christian coming back. So, mm -hmm. I love Christian when he was with Edge and the Brood, and I love Christian when he's like, you know what, fuck you, I'm going to TNA, and he made like his own legacy for himself, you know. But DNA was still kind of a this big deal, of, but <laughs> yeah. This is kind of a question I, I wish Big V was here for, but uh who's your favorite kind of like underrated C tier wrestler? Canyon. I've Canyon. I've said it before, I was, yeah. I was always when I was when I was younger, I was always a Tajiri mark. Oh yeah. Tajiri was great, especially in ECW. I I straight up, I straight up I I have straight up ripped off his buzzsaw kick. <laughs> it's funny and, being a wrestler, man. We all have that one wrestler where we're like low key, like that. This guy's fucking awesome, but nobody else does think that. Just us. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean Canyon for me, Hayabusa, which. God, that fuck, that guy's life, man. Jesus. But I can't do anything that Hayabusa does except for the Falcon Arrow, so <laughs> uh I don't I don't like it's another thing where I'm 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 not sure why, but test. I was I always loved test. Really? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but I thought the big the way he got the snap on the big boot was the coolest shit. Oh yeah. That he had a hell of a and big it was like, boot. The it was like weirdly protected too because nobody got up from that big boot. Yeah. Yeah, it was <laughs> if you got hit with a big boot by anyone else, it's like, okay, it's just a you know, a, a couple second spot. We'll but yeah, you get hit by tests and it was fucking done. Yeah. I think uh either V was in love with <laughs> Esther Road Dog because that's where he got his finisher from, so <laughs> we'll just speculate at this point because we have no idea. I think it was Road Dog because Test had a way different pump handle slam. Ah, uh, might have been then. But yeah, I took that thing and fucking thumbtacks. Because I did fuck him. Oh yeah, I did the um, I did the Test pump handle slam, and Big V got mad at me because he said I was doing it wrong. <laughs> It's it's kind of crazy because in wrestling, like, certain moves are protected. Certain moves belong to certain people, and, you know, you don't do it. And But after Hayabusa passed, I was I had a match with Bad Blood. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the fucking Falcon Arrow. I don't know if I can, and I might break his neck, but God damn it, it's for Hayabusa. <laughs> but I asked him, I said, I would do a Falcon Arrow. He's like, what? <laughs> so, I was like, just let me do it, please. He, he's like, I, can you do it? I was like, yeah, yeah, I've done it before. I just wish it, you know, in separate training, I really hadn't. <laughs> Which, yeah. Oh. But the guy that I trained with, man, Stephen Andrews, he would fucking be able to do and take anything. And we just would fuck around, and I'm like, let me do this. He's like, okay, let me do this. He's like, okay. And he was light enough that I could <laughs> fucking get away with it, so it was pretty cool. Um, then I, I tried it on him a few times and yeah, I, I also in training, I tried my first moonsault and land on my fucking head and I almost, that was almost the end of my career right there. But uh, I've, I th I, I've never been able to do a backflip. I've never attempted a fucking moonsault. Yeah. We had crash pads and everything and I was just jumped and just fucking went straight down on my head and they're like, all right, don't do that anymore. I was like, yeah, no shit. I was like, you see Vader and Bam Bam Bigelow. I'm like, yeah, I'm not that big. Uh, fuck. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. I, you also had the same same problem I do where you have lead in your ass and you can't fucking get up that high. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, <laughs> I can do a drop kick. I think it's been seen three or four times in a match and once was against Big V. I mean, he looked at me, he's like, I mean, the I... fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I could do, uh, I think I could probably do, a, a like, a CM Punk moonsault, but those are hideous looking. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one, but shit. 
Nah, I always like seeing Bam Bam do his. That was fucking oh, insane. Bam Bam, I, I, Vader doing his was kind Vader's of was, insane. Yeah, you remember uh, this tag team called the Headhunters? Yeah. Those dudes <laughs> was watching them do it was fucking insane. <laughs> Headhunter A and Headhunter B. Wasn't Rikishi <laughs> one of them? No, 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 no. The Headhunters were. I don't remember what they were. Um, they weren't Samoan. They were. Uh, Oh no 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 no! I know exactly who you're talking about now. Yeah, the big heavy set black like, guys, shorter fat guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They oh, they were big in Japan, and they they had a couple of short stints in America and stuff like that. But watching them do moon salts was fucking insane because you didn't think they could do it, and they would just snap like right in the middle of it. And you're like, what the? F and boom! And then they'd shake the whole ring. It was awesome. So, <laughs> but. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting, the Rumble. Um, yeah. It was Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, and Bianca Belair at the end. And I'm like, Jesus, please don't be fucking Flair. Please don't be fucking Flair. Please don't be Flair. And then they threw Flair out. I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be someone decent this year. <laughs> so I was pulling for Rhea. Am but I the, Yeah. Am I the only person who thinks that she is massively overrated? Charlotte? Yeah. No, you're not. There's there's hate groups. Okay. I've seen them. No, I, she. <laughs> I don't think she's that good of a wrestler. She, I mean, she's she can wrestle, but I don't think that where she is right now is based on her wrestling skills. So <laughs> no, it's it's like, all it's all fucking you know because of her dad. Yeah, so. exactly. I, I don't think she's as good as he was in his prime. I don't, not even close. No, I mean, Flair didn't do a lot of the aerial stuff that she does, but I mean, <laughs> oh, well, that's that's what I'm saying. It's, but I mean, okay, so you base your entire gimmick off of your dad, and then you 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 want to get out out of his shadow. It's like you got the figure eight, and you you wear the robes and you do the woo and you do. Come on, you're not going to be able to ever yeah. be your own. So that's what kind of bugs me. It's just it's female Ric Flair, you know. She can do different things, but she's just got this attitude. Like I guess Flair does too, but you know, I just never she got into the character. Like Flair with titties. This is true, you know. But so, <laughs> like I said, I was pulling for Rhea Ripley because I don't know. She looks like my niece a little bit, but she's cool. I like her. I like Bianca Belair too. She's whipping people with the fucking hair and stuff, which is kind of cool. And yeah, is it? Are yeah, we come back into your BDSM thing. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> is that where you're gonna take it? Because I never said anything do, about it. Do you want Do you want Bianca Belair to whip you with her hair? Yes. Anyway, well, so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just down on all fours with a ball gag in your mouth? <laughs> Are you trying to get me back for what I told you in the chat? What is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in the men's rumble, uh, we had Edge win that one. And what, when Randy 50, 50 on that, yeah, I mean, I had Randy Orton was gone. He got like a knee injury. So he was out of the rumble for half of it, more than half of it. But with that, I knew he was coming back and I was like, please don't make him fucking win. Cause that would be fucking terrible. And mm -hmm. luckily that didn't happen. I wasn't expecting edge when it, when it was him and Christian and I think it was Bobby Lashley at the end. And there's one other, I don't remember it. I only watched it once. But I was expecting Orton to win. I was like, this sucks. You know, I'm tired of seeing certain people in the main event picture. Like, I, I don't mind Orton at all, but I think he's got to finish his shit up with the Fiend. So, I don't know. Which I was disappointed that didn't happen. Yeah, like nothing happened with the Fiend. Which, I mean, if they build it up, it would make sense and it would be good. But who knows? So, I, I was happy with the Rumble. As a, an event and as a, a show all together. So happy that Drew McIntyre was able to <laughs> get Goldberg just for a decent fucking match. <laughs> I wouldn't even go as far as to call it decent, but I was just glad that it was short and he didn't win. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, why it was decent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the shit where he beat the Fiend when the Fiend was like at the top of his fucking popularity and everything, that was ridiculous. That was bullshit. And him beating Brock Lesnar was fucking ridiculous. 
And, you know, him and, and Undertaker was a terrible fucking match in Saudi. And it's, I got nothing against Goldberg, but I don't think he should be doing anything in the ring anymore. But I do. I think he's a huge fucking self mark who needs to fucking give it up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he should be in the ring. I mean, do fucking commentary or, you know, whatever the fuck, but in ring shit, I, I, I doubt him it. And Matt Riddle kind of get into it? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't, no, it was Brock that told Riddle that we will never have a match together, but I remember Goldberg and Riddle having a thing. So. Uh, Riddle was talking shit online. And uh, they, uh, first of all, I 110% believe that Riddle would fuck Goldberg's world up. Oh, yeah. Um, but he goes, he, he said something smart-ass to Goldberg online. Goldberg, being the huge fucking self-mark that he is, took offense to it. And they literally, like, there's a video of it, they literally had the fucking... Hey, pal, I'm not your pal friend. I'm not your friend, buddy. I'm not your buddy. <laughs> they had literally one had that fight. Because <laughs> really, you know how he is. He walks up, hey, bro. And Goldberg's like, I ain't your bro. <laughs> Shit. Riddle's pissed off a lot of people. I mean, Seth Rollins you know, and, and Lesnar and Goldberg. And I don't know if he's just trying to get fucking popular by it or trying to get people to notice him or... I don't know. I think he's trying to get people to notice him, but when you're like as good as he is, you kind of can because nobody's gonna fucking step up to him. Yeah, I mean Lesnar, but I mean I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, know. Riddle's Riddle's a lot lighter than Lesnar, but I think Riddle might actually take him. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be a good fight if it was a real fight. Because <laughs> Lesnar still got the size and the strength, but Riddle, you know, I don't know. It wasn't Riddle because he was doing? Uh, it's not UFC. He was doing some MMA offshoot, and I want to say he was undefeated while he was pro while he was on the indie circuit of pro wrestling. Hmm. But I'm not 110 percent sure. Yeah, no, I know he's legit in MMA, but that's I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> Be interesting to see, but I mean, with Lesnar's age, with Riddle's speed, with Lesnar's size and and strength, and I don't know, it would be actually a pretty good fight. Well, hi everybody, welcome to the MMA corner. Where two guys who don't <laughs> like MMA are fucking trying to analyze fighters. Um, I don't. Lesnar hasn't done like from what I've seen. It doesn't look like he does well against brawlers because he's got a. He's got to wrestle you, but if you pop him a couple times, he just doesn't know what to do. Yeah, that's true. But uh, if you want any more uh, MMA, fuck, go someplace else because that's about the extent of it for me. <laughs> I've seen. That's all I know about it. <laughs> I've seen uh, UFC 1 through, I think, 15, and I saw 100, and I've seen all of Brock Lesnar's fights, I've seen all of CM Punk's beatdowns and that's about the extent of it so yeah I, you know i'm not I, into it like i knew I, I the the only one i've sat through is cm punk's first fight because uh, i knew he was I, I was mad at him because he was talking shit about wrestling for one uh for a second like i watched his training videos and i knew he was gonna suck but i didn't know <laughs> to the extent Jesus. Yeah, but he got the buy rates, so fuck everyone wanted to see how he did. <laughs> was just... he did. Yeah, he did that, and then the, his second fight, he got the other dude fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, don't don't beat his ass too bad. He makes us money. You know, it's just don't like... Don't beat his ass too bad, but dude was like legit, like holding him up, tickling him. Like, <laughs> I straight up remember like... Punk had him in like a, a chokehold or something, and dude stood up straight and looked around, kind of like shrugged, and then bumped him. <laughs> yeah, I always like seeing those when people get cocky. You're just like, really? What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. But yeah, I guess with CM Punk, it was you know. But anyway, um, yeah. So that was it. That we had the Rumble and Edge's, I guess, picking Roman Reigns and. Bianca Belair has yet to choose her opponent. That'd be good. 
Yeah, Reigns and Edge. I mean, spear versus spear could be interesting. I'd so much rather see Edge and McIntyre, though. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who they're planning for McIntyre. I haven't, no, nothing's come up so far. It's just, he... I'm hoping it's, I think, I'm hoping it's Edge and it could be like a passing of the torch moment because McIntyre is so good and he's like one of the guys who have like actually earned where he's at today. Yeah. Yeah. I want like five years and to yeah, pass. I just really want to see that one. <laughs> I want like five years to pass and then he Slater to come back and just be fucking jacked <laughs> and go for the world title <laughs> because all of three man band would have totally like <laughs> would have come back and just fucking annihilated. That would have been awesome. <laughs> well, fucking uh, McIntyre was fucking kicking ass and like we didn't see anything from McIntyre for a while. And then I remember. Drew McIntyre's back in this little uh, indie promotion, and I click on the video, and he's fucking just ripped and huge. <laughs> yeah. I remember all that. He just, like, took some time and fucking came back, like, insanely huge, which is good. I mean, he took most people, like, they get fired from WWE, and they turn to fucking, like, shit, and he took it as a, like, a moment to turn his shit around and fucking come back even better. Oh, right back? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, there's rumor of him going to AEW. I don't know why, but I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I, it, he probably thinks so, but no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, another podcaster. <laughs> but R Ryback said he's coming back to a coming to AEW. I'm sure he does. Does AEW know about this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Cody Rhodes says what, then you know it's bullshit. <laughs> he's like, wait, what? Who said this? Yeah. So, I guess, yeah, speaking of AEW, we're just going to go for wrestling for a little while here. Fucking Sting is going to have a match at 62, I think. 62 with a fucked up neck? Yeah, I am. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Teaming with Darby Allen, which is, I think, cool because, like, they get these big name people in there and then they have, like, sponsor kids with <laughs> other wrestlers that. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, yeah, we could look at that match and, like, see who's going to be taking all the bumps in that match. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting, though, because they got, like, DDP came back for one last match with AEW and, you know, Sting's there and Taz has got. People on his side that he's like training as shooters and you know all this other stuff. So yeah. it's interesting. I mean, that little garden gnome. <laughs> well, you know, didn't he expose himself to a twelve-year-old? Fucking twelve-year-olds, man. Did you make that up or did that happen? No, it happened. I remember. I don't remember. I wasn't the twelve-year-old, but yeah, he uh, <laughs> he was at a. <laughs> it wasn't me. I'm just the saying. Twelve-year-old was me. <laughs> I just remember there was some shit that went down. It was when he was in ECW, and I think he was at like a tanning salon or something, and he got out of the thing naked and walked out of the room or something. There was like a twelve-year-old in the waiting room. Or I don't. Well, <laughs> He's just well, like that's different. Yeah, no, I I don't know what the circumstances it's like he, are. It's not like he was at the park and he was just fucking. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't anything like that. No, <laughs> I just remember it caused some shit for the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure most of the ECW locker room at that time exposed themselves one way or another. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I only went to one ECW show and it was fucking insane. Was anarchy it was like legit I, everything was crazy so i wish i would have went well i graduated from high school and i had like my graduation money saved up and they came to la for one pay-per-view was heat wave i don't know if i showed you you this oh, or not but there? yeah i uh, took a screenshot and i sent it to v you can actually see me in the crowd <laughs> And if he's like, exactly the what same. the fuck? You have hair? I was like, well, yes, I at one time I did have hair, so. But that was... Wasn't a ponytail? Yeah, yeah. I had it pulled back. I had long hair, but, you know. I I fully believe you're that guy with the long ponytail and a trench coat. No, I didn't have a trench coat. I was wearing a Misfit shirt, but, you know. It was interesting, because that was, that was the show where 
uh, what the fuck were they? XPW was there. And they would, a bunch of them, they all broke out and we all ran out there and they were just fucking beating the shit out of each other. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on? I don't think this is a work. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they just started getting fucking mouthy and crazy. And then it busted outside of the arena and then everyone just kind of followed. Like, if you watch the pay-per-view back, you can see, like, half the crowd just disappear. <laughs> because they're all running outside to go see this fucking <laughs> locker room brawl. It was pretty crazy. So, but yeah, you can see me on there a couple times. And that was the first time ever that Rob Van Dam did the Van Terminator. It was fucking insane, which is basically the coast to coast. Ooh. Yep. And had a stairway to hell match. It's awesome. Yeah, I went to. I I never went to ECW, but I went to XPW once and watched a watched a Supreme Catch on Fire, and that was when I decided I never want to go to another indie show again. <laughs> uh, I Supreme was the first big name person, like from when I was a kid that when I was watching wrestling that I was in a locker room with. And we were doing this little tribute show, and he was in the back with with me. And I had the I used to wear this like these big old chemical handling rubber gloves. And he's like, "What the hell is that? Where'd you get that?" And I was like, "Oh, they're like yeah. military rubber gloves." He's like, "Fucking awesome!" And I looked at his shoulder. I'm like, "Oh shit!" And he's like, "What?" I was like, "Judge Tread." He's like, "Fuck yeah!" I was like, "Yeah!" So I had a moment with Supreme, but you know. He had a a death match at the end of the show with uh, Willie Mack, and it was my first death match in person and my first big names that I had run into. So it's kind of cool. Sad to hear about it in passing, but you know. I was I was supposed to have a match with him. No shit. That's interesting. What happened? Did, like, did, yeah, he was coming. He was coming to BCW. COVID happened. Oh shit. Yeah, that derailed a lot of stuff that was supposed to happen. But that's one of the things we'll never get back. COVID happened and then uh, he died, so. Yeah. That's, yeah. I I didn't, I remember um, Homicide was supposed to show up, but, you know, shit happens, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. All right. I'm done with wrestling talk. Do you have any video game shit? going on uh video game shit hold on i have to pull up my notes because i'm super professional you still spiting hitman or are you just over it now because there's nothing else to do uh, i've yeah i'm over it there's nothing else to do i was mad at it for a while and then i, I get i get mad at these videos i see on youtube where they're talking about how great hitman 3 is and i'm like just, just, no it's not though <laughs> Yeah, I've gone from playing Cyberpunk or trying to play Cyberpunk to playing Marvel Lego because they got nothing else going on. But yeah, I'll probably did finish you, up Far Cry Five. Did you ever play the uh, the Mass Effect games? No, no, I haven't played those. Are they very wordy? Is oh, there well, is there well, action? You're or... your dance because they're com... they're, What? There's action. Oh, okay. That's, I didn't know. It just seemed like one of those, not a telltale game, but it, you know, like a lot of uh, interactions and no. words and stuff. You know, like words. Well, it's an RPG, so there's going to be, yeah. Okay. So they're they're redoing those. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're uh, they're remaking them, but. Um... I, I stumbled across the story where the first one they had to cut some of the DLC from Mass Effect One because the source code's corrupted. Oh shit! <laughs> so, uh, which Mass Effect One's like the shittiest one in the trilogy, so it's not too big of a loss. Oh, they uh, they took the mod out of uh, Cyberpunk where you could make Whoopi with uh, Keanu Reeves. That's damn sad. Someone spent time on that. Okay. Well, I'm talking to my fucking self here. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Technical difficulties, everybody. Sorry about that. Like, right when you're talking about a. Uh... 
<laughs> oh, what? What was the last thing you heard me say? <laughs> oh, um, you're talking about a mod for Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. I just dropped a mod for Cyberpunk where you could make Whoopi with Keanu Reeves. They took it out and they got rid of it. So that's Looks sad for some like people. Now there's no point in playing the game even. Yeah, I remember, you know, there's certain things that you... me. <laughs> I remember spending, what, an hour and a half typing in the nude code and Tomb Raider on my fucking Game Shark. But, you know, say la vie. <laughs> so you can see them triangle titties. Yeah, and all it did was turn her, like, the same color as her skin. It was pretty fucking stupid. Anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, I Risen. See, I want to see Keanu Reeves hang dong. I want to see his O face. And I want him to mess all over my face. Is that too much to ask, CD Projekt Red? <laughs> and on top of all that, you want to experience it in Cyberpunk 2 as well. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took you a second. <laughs> God. <laughs> Actually, I think my I think my internet I think my uh, my sound is like a half a second right behind you. Okay, well, I'm not editing this, so fuck you. All right. Well. <laughs> All right. So no video game news, or I mean, what the fuck? Ah, uh, Jesus. No, I can still hear you. Can okay. you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I heard you for a minute. Oh, okay. Well, this episode is going to be interesting. We can't blame it on V this time. But like this I said, time, this time it's 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 me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, no other video game you news. Can't just have like a perfect show go through. No, it wouldn't. I, the fans have come to expect these kind of. Uh, human moments from this, us i suppose this level of quality this, yeah <laughs> no they know not to expect quality what the fuck <laughs> but, all right no more mo no more video game we're just, news we're, we're just we're just no but we're just doing the show at your house we're grabbing that shit that big v bot and we're just hanging out at your place now <laughs> yeah that's probably what it's gonna be so did you want to get into wandavision what do you think I got, hold on, I got like a, a, a book news real quick. Oh, this is okay. Because apparently, no, it, so apparently COVID has been hitting us uh, all differently. And, you know, now that George R. R. Martin hasn't been able to go out and travel and, you know, do whatever the fuck he does, uh, he's written a hundred, hundreds of pages for Winds of Winter. <laughs> That's what it is, the whole conspiracy. Someone that's a fan of Game of Thrones say, you know what? We're going to make it so he's got to stay home. And this is what they came up with. Yes. All of this has been yes. for the next Game of Thrones book. Awesome. Well played. <laughs> well played, China. Or wherever. Or... You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I can enjoy it. We've <laughs> finally gotten our way. There you go. <laughs> well, I mean, a hundred pages is a fucking chapter for him, so you know, I don't know if that really means much for the story at large. And Brandon Sanderson's going to have that much well, more to go on, says, or he said what? Well, how do you write books so fast? Because if I write six sentences in a day, then I consider it a hard day's work. Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> That's a good, interesting take on it. All right, so a hundred or six sentences for him is a big deal. Yeah, it's like a, he said it's like a full day's work for him. <laughs> it must be nice. <laughs> I wrote six sentences today. I'm going to bed. I'm so tired. <laughs> All right, well. I'm going to go eat another foot-long sub sandwich. <laughs> they sponsor him over there. <laughs> He's a spokesperson. But, 
All right, well, uh, I guess this is kind of video game related news if you wanted to touch on this at all. Uh, did you have any game stock? Game stop stock? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I don't know how, but I forgot about that. That's like the biggest fucking news story. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Reddit, a bunch of Redditors got together and decided to fuck with the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> I, I for one, I think it's fucking hilarious. I mean, the, the, the hedge funds were sitting there fucking drilling GameStop stock down into the fucking gutter. And short sharing oh, it and everything else. <laughs> Did you see the one guy who was like crying on CNN or whatever the fuck? And he's like, this is bullshit tactics. <laughs> he just cussed on air and he's like crying because he lost billions of dollars because he can't fuck over everybody. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but when, when, when poor people learn how to do it, it's, it's suddenly a bad thing. Yeah, now they're calling for regulations and everything else. And GameStop's just like, what the fuck did we do? We did get all this money coming in. <laughs> Shit. So, <laughs> their fucking business model of uh, selling things for 200% markup after they buy them for, you know, 99% off of what they fucking sold it for. You'd think that would have been perfect for keeping in business, but I don't know. People got sick of the shit. Yeah. Didn't you once, work at GameStop? Once the internet came around and, and everybody was I <laughs> Yeah, I worked at GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole. No. <laughs> hey, I just bought this game. Oh, I don't dude, care. I'll give I you a dollar like, for it. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll tell you they have they they promote such like predatory uh tell the employees to do such predatory behaviors on everything and it's fucking disgusting like used car salesman man that's anyway used car salesman of video games yeah <laughs> man, did you buy the 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 what the fuck was it the the game stop pass or whatever no well you could have saved oh so you would have made a regular price <laughs> yeah Fuck oh, game how, about stuff. The, how about the disc protection plan that doesn't actually protect the disc and just fucks you out of three dollars? <laughs> uh, yeah, this disc got scratched. I don't know what you want me to do. I can't give you anything for it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, what? I have the protection plan. Oh, it just expired. <laughs> you certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> I had something like that. I bought Rock Band, like the whole big fucking set. Actually, my roommate did. And then, uh, he was leaving and the drums were all broken and shit. He's like, Oh, I still got the receipt. Take it in. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, do it in the next week or two. So I took it into Best Buy where it was from and they gave me a whole new fucking rock band set. I was like, holy shit. Nice. So it works sometimes, I guess, but <laughs> so, but you can't plug in two drum kits on the fucking Xbox. I just, in case anyone was wondering, so no dueling drum, drum offs. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> also, uh, did you see this? Just came to my mind. Did you see the uh, Godzilla vs Kong trailer yet? The one that we talked about last week. Did we? Yeah. Oh, okay. We were talking about. It. Never mind. Yeah, they push it back a week, right? Ed ed edit this out so it looks like I always pay attention to you too. <laughs> Okay. It was might have been one one of the times you got up to go take a piss. <laughs> oh, you know that's that's a big real that might have happened. <laughs> it is a real possibility, but it's a very real possibility. I do pee a lot when you guys start going off about your dumb shit. Yeah, and everything's dumb shit. That's why you're always pissing. So, <laughs> uh, what else we got? We got like, go on division. I'll try to get back yeah, into that one. Again. Like you, you're wanting to talk about you're talking about one. You want to talk about one division, and yes, one division was a cool show uh, this week, and I was way wrong both my uh, prediction. Oh, what was your prediction? I thought like the the small town was like a prison for people who are like too dangerous, like kind of like how Wanda is. 
Oh, okay, okay. I I kind of figured that this is what it was. It was in her mind, and she was like just screwing with reality. But she's it's not in her mind. She's screwing with her, her reality and pretty much fucking pulling a weekend at Bernie's with a vision. Yeah, that was interesting. That that, that was kind of horrific, know. man. <laughs> that was horrific because like yeah, he's. <laughs> You know he's 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 basically just an android, but still he's up and he's got that giant hole in his fucking head. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of rough to see. I imagine some kids oh, watching no. that and having nightmares. <laughs> but it, it like the first two episodes, it was it was weird because it was different. Nobody knew what to expect. People were complaining, but this episode is when it first it finally started feeling like Marvel's like a Marvel movie, you know. Oh, yeah. They they bring in Monica Rambeau, which is Captain Marvel. If anyone doesn't know that, um, they brought back Jimmy Woo, which is awesome because I always love Agents of yeah. Atlas, and I love Ray Park, so that's pretty fucking cool. They brought back Cat Denning. They brought back, it's just like all these minor characters are playing big roles in something that, and that you know it's cool to see. Brought back Cat Denning for Daddy Zach. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how old she was in 40 year old virgin, but dang. Anyway. I'm pretty sure that was just illegal. No, I think she was legal at that point. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you're a sex criminal now. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> she was in 40 year old virgin? Oh, she was. Daughter, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. That was the first time I ever saw her, or remember seeing her in anything. So That was the first time I ever saw her, but I didn't realize it was her until right now. But the first thing I remember seeing her in was the first Thor movie. Oh, yeah. I never saw that TV show. TV show. Yeah, I never saw it. Was it? Yeah, I never saw that. So, interesting. (laughs) But yeah, I like that they're they're making minor characters from the Marvel comics into, like, they might be throwaway characters in the MCU, but people that are comic fans know who the fuck they are. So that's cool, you know. I don't know if Jimmy Woo is ever going to get Agents of Atlas out of anything, but it's cool to see him, you know. I mean, that's kind of what these movies have been kind of like, the movies, the TV show now, have been kind of like specializing in in things that like us as comic book fans can be like, ooh, look at that, look at that, I know what that is. Yeah, when they start mentioning Cosmic Rays, I'm like, oh shit, Fantastic Four, oh god. You know, and my wife's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> we, had a, we had that same fucking conversation <laughs> with, uh, with my wife. My wife. My wife. Yeah. So cosmic. What are you? Why are you so excited? These are cosmic rays. So? Like, never mind. <laughs> I can't. Like, this wasn't with, the, it wasn't with the show because it was. Uh, with that god awful fucking uh, Captain Marvel movie, and they started introducing the scroll. Oh yeah, Alos. And then I got, and then I got excited about it, and yeah, my wife was like, "Why the fuck are you getting excited for these green people?" <laughs> yeah, when they said Monica Rambeau, I was like, "Oh shit!" And my wife's like, "Why? What? What's the big thing?" I said, "How many times have you watch Captain Marvel? Because I think that's one of her favorites." And she's like, I don't know. I said, that's the daughter. That's the daughter of... She's like, what? And then she went back and watched. She's like, oh. I'm like, God, man, come on. <laughs> so, got to explain things. Why does your wife have awful taste in movies? I, I don't know. I mean, at least she likes Marvel. Okay, so Captain Marvel and Thor are her, her favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Thor goes without saying, but you know. And uh, Thor's a good one. Yeah, well, she, <laughs> yeah. She's, she likes Doctor Strange too. So, yeah. But Doctor Strange was good. like honestly the only like like Thor two was the weakest one, but I think Captain Marvel's fucking boring. Yeah, I mean for the '90s throwback stuff, it's kind of interesting, but that movie would not have made as much money as it did unless it was in between infinity war and, and end game, you know, like everyone's That's like, the only reason I saw it. Cause I was just, I was just like everybody else where I'm like, I just want some little nugget of end game, please. Yeah. And 
basically all you got was the fucking the the stinger scene at the end. And yeah, it's just fucking it was just like they pulled the wool over our eyes and made us go see this damn movie. But Oh, motherfucker, you're getting me started on this shit. You you fucking it 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 was in between those and it said, Oh yeah, there'll be Easter eggs for fucking uh It'll be some Easter eggs for Endgame. Okay, cool. And then that one little stinger piece, and they're like, "Oh, but Cap, or uh, yeah, Captain Marvel is going to play a huge part in the final battle." She didn't. No, <laughs> they didn't do shit with it. I was just this. I feel like I got robbed. You know, I like Miss Marvel, not not Kamala Khan, but Captain Marvel before she like cut her hair and was wearing. The- uniform right like back in the avengers when she had on the the black suit with the the yellow lightning bolt and she was like a decent character oh, yeah. yeah so they kind of screw her over as a character since she went through her uh binary transformation and all that but you know that's just me a better do you think it'd be a better character if there's a better person playing her i think that would have a lot to do with it too i can't i couldn't name anybody that could player but i mean i think that would be a a huge uh benefit to having a different uh actress is that it would be a, a much decent character yeah. but we're gonna get on the fucking uh, hate train on this one again <laughs> get on that hate hate train that fucking bitch yeah oh fuck <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> We'll get off of that before we go off on another tangent. Before we get mad at each other again. Yeah. Well, no, we we team up to get mad at her. (laughs) But so I found out that this season's nine episodes long, and this one coming up on Friday when this episode drops will be the mid-season episode. So it should be interesting. I think it's when they go to the '80s. Um. That's where she has like her throwback costume on and stuff like that that we'd seen in the previous. So, yeah, seems interesting. I'm still in it. I still like it a lot, and uh, I'm still sticking with it. So it's very, very good. It's getting it's getting way better, and it's exactly like we called it. Well, so yeah, by the time this by the time this episode airs, uh, we'll have already watched it. So, you know, future us are already excited about it. Yeah, yeah, and we'll be talking to you about it next week. And then when the show's over, we're going to have to come up with something else to watch to take up 20 minutes of our show. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, shameless. Sh- uh, isn't, that, isn't that on its last season? Yeah, that's on its last season, too. Yeah. All right, well, um, what Ooh, else we got? Did you see the, uh, did you see the new uh, Coming to America 2 trailer? I saw the first one. I didn't. I didn't know that there was another one that came out. There's another one now, and they they uh, showed off his son. Oh, who's his son played by? I don't. I don't know. I don't know the actor's name. Oh, okay. Interesting. Did, did he? I don't. I, I haven't watched Coming to America in a while, but I don't remember him banging somebody either. Well, he had a queen at the end, so. Yeah, at the end, but I don't remember him banging anybody before her. While oh while he was in America is that what it's, the premise yeah. is is that he's got an he illegitimate a, kid a yeah he has an illegitimate kid and they kind of like in the uh, trailer the new trailer they kind of introduced that there's going to be a power struggle between his oldest daughter and his new kid uh, James Earl Jones makes a quick appearance yeah so it's basically Black uh, Panther but a comedy. <laughs> It's it's a comedy Black Panther. Yeah, so they live in Zamunda, Wakanda, and they come back to America because there's a bastard kid who's a villain now, and yeah, trying to struggle for the power of Wakanda, ah, Zamunda, and yeah, it sounds very I, I familiar to me. Make a, I think if I remember correctly, I think they straight up make a Wakanda reference. Really? Okay. Yeah. And it's just coming straight to Amazon Prime, is it? Yes. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's Amazon produced. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember with so many fucking streaming services, there's like, there's no way to keep track of everything. Who does what anymore? It's like, okay, Amazon does the boys. Netflix does lock and key. Uh, Netflix does umbrella Academy. 
Amazon Prime does, you know, I can't keep track of this shit. So. Um, did you see that uh, the Justice League has gotten their uh, rating? The, the Snyder Cut? No. What is it rated? Rated R for violence in some language. <laughs> nice. I was hoping Henry Cavill would hang Dong, but apparently not. <laughs> he comes back from it. It's like, oh, they buried him naked, evidently. <laughs> he just <laughs> bursts out of the casket and just runs like slouching around like a zombie. Wang hanging. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, oh, fuck, it's bizarro. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Bizarro just hanging dong all over. Oh my god, yeah. I don't remember Dark Side looking like that. Me, I'm hate the stiff penis. <laughs> okay, calm down there, bud. <laughs> Me, I'm hate oh ugly woman. Make wiener soft. All right, there, Bizarro, knock it off. But... Wonder Woman just grabs it and swings him around by <laughs> Which would be more entertaining than the entire film of 1984. But yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. That, that would if they if they put that in the movie, that would make the entire movie for me. <laughs> That's probably why it's rated R. Are you I and I hope Zack Snyder is listening to this right now. Because I know we have a big poll in uh in uh, Hollywood, yeah, we do. And I want to see Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman grab Bizarro's penis and swing it around. <laughs> swing him around by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's gonna write that in there because he he listens to us. Uh, so there he listens to, he listens to us because we know what the fans want. We are the fans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they love fans in Hollywood, let me tell you. They fucking adore us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so when is it do we have any idea when that's set to actually debut or um, still tentative or I don't I think it's still tentative. Yeah, yeah they have, I, the article I'm looking at, they don't have anything. Yeah, it's still a ways off from what I'm hearing, too. So, But yeah, that should be interesting. So, uh, what else? God, man, it's been shit week. I mean, GameStop took up most of the fucking week as far as news. Anything nerd-related was GameStop. Yeah, that, was, that was basically it. It's just fucking suddenly GameStop is a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're invited to the fucking the big uh, press things and the junkets and everything for the the high stock rollers and shit. <laughs> fucking oh, skeevy little so bastard sad. CEO is rubbing elbows with fucking <laughs> Gates and shit. He's like, "Hey guys, hey, who let this fucking guy in here?" <laughs> oh, I'm with you now. Him, 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 him. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I wish I would have gotten in on some of that, though. That would have been fucking amazing. But... Fuck. Back when it was four bucks? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's the but... thing. Nobody fucking called this shit happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bed Bath & Beyond, BlackBerry, uh, AMC. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, follow I'm following that fucking Reddit now. Yeah. <laughs> you and fucking 700 billion other people. So, oh. the second they mention something, everyone's going to run out and buy it. But my wife's got, uh, my wife has a uh, Carnival Cruise Lines because it dropped down to like a dollar. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, if anyone wants to start getting that ball rolling, I'm much obliged. <laughs> my, fa my favorite meme of the week is, which will be my new segment on the show, is uh, that picture of that, that frame from Happy Gilmore. And they're like, oh, poor people learned how stocks work. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny. I mean, we're not we might not be very rich or bright, but we are very dangerous in large quantities. So <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I hate I that. Try to figure out how to make money and fuck. <laughs> Mate spawn and die. That's a horrible fucking thing in life. Um, all right, well, um, you want to do a comic book book club? 
Yeah, let's do a comic book book club because uh, I want you to tell everybody what that absolute bastard Big Vicious did. All right, so Big V, show. Big V sent me his review via text for a comic book book club, and I wasn't allowed to divulge it until we were on air because he knew it was going to piss off Zach. So, uh, it starts off. I should send you my review of Bitch World. I don't think Zach well like it w-e-l-l like it lol and i told him i said you have to like it or you're a mess that's true that's true too and i said okay well you have to like it or you're a misogynist and then he said i hated it the artwork gave me a headache the story was lag it would have been better show or movie than a comic in my opinion (laughs) that was this fucking review (laughs) so not not a fan of uh, this one, V is. Well, he's wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I thought the artwork was pretty good. Well, okay. I'm glad you have an opinion. Do you do you do you disagree with me? I didn't I didn't like it. There's a couple of uh, things in it that I did like, like the old throwback uh, advertisements. Those were pretty cool. But, I mean, the artwork in general was just blobby, kind of blocky. And there's some things in there where it's like they didn't take much time. The guy's forehead is like a foot long. And it's off to the <laughs> side and weird. And, you know, it's just a little weird. Like, they didn't, they weren't trying hard with the art. But they were just getting enough in to pass so that they could tell this story. Well, so I kind of put it in, like, as the same field as uh like southern bastards that was like kind of purposely purposefully ugly well i mean if that's the case then they achieved their goal because yeah i thought the the story was kind of i thought the story was kind of great where like where uh women have become so have, have to be so domesticated now that if they speak their opinion or have an opinion they get sent off world to this prison planet yeah so basically what the story is, is like, like Zach was saying, they have a different type of society where women are, are like super fucking beat down and everything subservient. and subservient, I guess, like Stepford wives sort of. And if they get out of line or anything like that, they get sent to a, a different planet. That's a, basically a big prison. And so that's, that's the basic premise. But then the story, as it goes along, they're trying to start a sports league with the female prisoners. Yeah. So that's and you know, it, it it's kind of like Stepford Wives and um, the Longest Yard. <laughs> yep. In a way, but yeah. So, I mean, I didn't. I I, I don't think I hated it as much as V did, but I mean, it, yeah, it, it's kind of a trope that's been done to death. You know, like well, a pres- yeah, but it's also well known on the show and well documented that Big V hates women. See, that's the thing. It's like, if you have an opinion on this and it's not positive, then you they could just say, oh, you're a misogynist. <laughs> it's like... Or, or, or I, since I'm the... I'm not saying anybody... If anybody doesn't like this comic book that they're misogynist, I'm saying that Big V is an incel. And that's why he hated this. Because <laughs> he hates women because they won't give him the sex that he feels he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> he can't fight back. Well, that yeah, I mean, you could basically call him anything you wanted. Oh, hey, you know what? The the lead in the in the story was black, so guess what? He didn't like it because he's a racist. He's also <laughs> it's, a racist, but we've known this for a while. It's, don't say stuff like that, because like people are gonna <laughs> believe it. Uh, he's not a racist, <laughs> but he is an incel. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. So, yeah, I guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. It was what it was. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't great. It was just like you so often say it was overwhelmingly meh, you know. <laughs> yeah. I I I like like so I like it, but I like the first two volumes. The third one peters out hard. 
Yeah. But I think the I like it's it's a story that's been done, but it's kind of like one of those things that like it's been done to death because it's an interesting story. That yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it, they did it in uh, the longest yard, and it was yeah, kind of like the way that that went, but with like almost a futuristic kind of cyberpunkish overlay to it, you know. I want, I want to, I want more stories like in that world, but I want that to just kind of like come up and bite, because it's a bunch of rich old men who are like on the council who yeah. take over the world. And I'm sure fucking the QAnon people are jerking off over that idea, but um, they, I just want, I want more stories in that world where it blows up in their face. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see them doing that. It wouldn't be too bad, you know. Just different types of stories within that world, I could see being yeah. interesting. But um, let's see. So he says for. His pick for next week is I'm reading American Gods for next week. Plus, I'll be throwing out a review for the new Werewolf game that hits tomorrow. So, tomorrow being Wednesday for us because we're recording on two. No, tomorrow. Jesus, I'm all back ass backwards. Yeah, uh, Thursday. It comes out Thursday, the new Werewolf game. So, he'll be. In the past. Yes, Doc Brown and Marty McFly are about ready to come pick us up and take us back. But so he'll have that. So I guess this one is uh, American Gods, which kind of pisses me off because, yeah, that's the thing. It, it's a show and a book that I have on my list to read. And he's done this twice. He fucking cheats. You know, it's like when I was a kid, I had to fucking read Tom Sawyer and I found the comic book version of it and I failed because it wasn't close enough to the fucking book. <laughs> so finding the comic version of all these fucking movies and books is kind of like pissing me off because he did it with uh, The Strain as well. And I'm like, Jesus, dude, find there's so much original shit to read. So he's not here and I can fucking talk as much shit about him as I want. It's because he is an incel with no imagination. <laughs> this is a good show. Did they make a comic? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> God, wait till you discover Star Wars comics. Oh, shit. <laughs> We'll never see him again. You guys, you guys. <laughs> now you you've recommended one of those before. But yeah, it was the the first Darth Vader one. Wasn't oh, it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, I like no, that I recommended one. The first Darth Vader. Yeah. And then uh Oh man, I cannot wait to shit all over this. <laughs> all right, well, have fun with that. So, uh, anyone interested um, to read along? It's American Gods, I guess, Volume One. He didn't give me much more to go on. Because there's thirty of them. Yeah, shit. But that's been one of those things that Neil Gaiman uh, book I've been wanting to read. It's, and, it's really good, and the show's fucking fantastic. Yeah, I haven't gotten around to any of that stuff yet, so I don't know. I'll see if I can give it a shot. I might fucking lie to it. <laughs> I hate fucking spoiling books because books are infinitely better than the movies almost all the time. And a comic oh, yeah. ver version is just a fucking picture book version of the, the novel. So, I don't know. It has to be fucking a side story because, oh, it's the first in a three volume ad adaptation of Neil Gaiman's modern classic. So, yeah, this is just. Yeah. This is just a picture book of fucking the book. <laughs> like I said, I got fucking a song as Tom Sawyer in, in school and I read the fucking comic book. So that's basically cool. So I've read the book and fucking watched the show. I don't need to read this. Yeah, pretty much. I guess you get a pass. <laughs> you lucky motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it, V. Yeah. Anyway. All right, so that's comic book book club for y'all. <laughs> Do were we doing the the, the sign guy question of the week or no? We're we yeah, waiting for V. Question. All right, so sign guy. Oh, I got it. The exact word. People like to hear Don't that. Do the exact words because then we'll be here the rest of the night. That's what I'm saying. I mean, some people like to hear it, especially him. So, <laughs> uh, la 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 la. What was it? Um. Shit. 
Okay, and now I'm just gonna screech so okay. What was the worst locker room incident that you ever witnessed in person? So we were talking last uh, week about Undertaker and the, the the way the locker rooms were, and then it, it got into us talking about locker rooms that we've been a part of. So, like, uh, I've seen, like, I've seen cocaine usage. That's about it. Or no, I the I I talked to you off the uh, off the show about this, and now I had another incident just pop into my mind, um, where the Booker called one of the wrestlers. Well, he didn't call him a mark. He was like the wrestler was like pouting about something. I can't even fucking remember what it was now. And the booker goes, are you a wrestler? Are you a fucking Mark? And then the, uh, wrestler gets up and just fucking chokes out the booker. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing. I was there for that too. So, <laughs> but oh, you remember it then? Yeah. Yeah. I remember everything that was going on, but yeah. Um, mine, you were there for that one too. Mine. But yeah, I mean, cocaine, I've seen people with guns, I've seen uh, people getting blowjobs, I've seen, you know, it's just. Well, well yeah, there's that. Yeah, you there's all that the kind of. Lot. You go out in the parking lot and you're like, hey, what does that person do in their car? Oh! <laughs> yeah, you go out to get something that you forgot, like some piece of ring gear or something. And it's just oh, the hey, car hey. fucking shaking in the back. <laughs> no, I've done it to where, I have done it to where like, oh, I'm going to go outside for a second. Oh, hey, there's my friend in his car. Let's go bug him real quick. Oh, there's a woman with a mouthful of cock. I got to leave. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, as far as, like, bad incidents, the only thing that really comes to mind is that two guys had a match, and one of them had a plant in the crowd, and you're supposed to let the other guy know if you're going to do some shit like that. Evidently, he didn't think he had to let anyone know about it, so... He attacks a fan, is what it looks like to everybody, because nobody knew that this guy sitting in the crowd was a fucking plant. Uh, they come through the curtain and proceed to fucking start beating the shit out of each other, because the guy that wasn't involved with the plant was like, what the fuck are you doing hitting a fan? And then the other guy he was like, fuck you, I don't need to explain myself to you, and they fucking go at it. So it was, it was just a fight, basically. I mean, I've yeah. never seen anyone stabbed or shot or fucking, you know, extorted for money or anything like that in a wrestling locker room. So were you were you there when uh, I don't I don't know if this is tread like lightly. Really no, if you're this like the early days of the freak show where you were there yet, but like um, the sound guy in BCW at the time, <laughs> who, who was a major a major meth head. Oh, okay. Something happens. Something happens, and he goes through, uh, and he goes outside to like scream and yell about it, because you know uh, the meth head sound guy and the other like the camera guy. At the who's still the camera guy, they didn't like each other, mm -hmm. and the camera guy said something offhanded. So the the meth head sound guy just walks out and starts yelling, picks uh, picks this one guy who, Moose Moro, who is a gigantic mountain of a man. So <laughs> everybody in that locker room starts getting in Moose's face and starts screaming and yelling. And Moose, who's also like an army veteran, so he's not afraid to fucking mess somebody up. <laughs> He goes, what the fuck are you yelling at me for? And so I guess the meth head like shoves Moose and Moose is like, fuck no. And just, just fucking plants this kid on the asphalt, <laughs> plant and skids. So I don't know anything about this because I'm actually in the ring during a match. And then we're uh, cutting a promo. And then all of a sudden this kid starts, comes through the door crying and screaming and just starts ripping his sound equipment out of the fucking wall. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I was there for that one. <laughs> Okay, and then we just, yeah, we just turned around and left. We're like, oh, this is this is getting real, so it's time to leave. Yeah, I mean, we've had incidents like that. I, I, if I remember right, that same sound guy had another issue later on down the road, too. Yeah, that's the one that got him fired. Yeah, and then my the, the, uh, the, the music guy getting fucking blasted with a chair for I getting the, the, the music wrong. Hilarious. Yeah, I mean. Oh, my God. <sighs> yeah, so you got we the music wrong. Man. <laughs> no, it was, it, 
he didn't he didn't get the fucking he didn't get the music wrong. So we have this cam this um, sound guy. Well, he's not the sound guy anymore because he just everything he touches turns to shit, right? <laughs> so he fucking uh, Mac Traeger, who who's a notoriously snug person to work with, <laughs> says, "If you fuck this up, I'm gonna hit you with a chair." And what did he do? He fucks it up. Yeah. I mean, so fucking Mac hits him with a chair and legitimately Hardway splits him open. Yeah. And this kid, this guy ain't a fucking wrestler. Like you said, he's like, he's like Hans Molman. He's got these big, thick glasses and he's a heavy set guy. And he's just like, you know, like kind of aloof about stuff going on around him. <laughs> he didn't think Mac was serious, but Mac had had enough of this shit or he was just God, in a mood. <laughs> if it was, if it was him, if it was anybody but him, I'd be mad about it. But like, it was him, so it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and we and we find out later that it's his fucking birthday. And he's it's got his a. This is his birthday, <laughs> and he had to go to the emergency room and get stitches, and he got fucking concussed, and all this shit afterward. We're like, oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> but. Yeah. yeah, it was still fucking funny to me. And then it was nothing funnier like a week, a week or two weeks later when um, he's back at the music again, fucking it up again. And there's I go, Mac, come here. And Max, I go, uh, sound uh, Hans is fucking up the music again. And Max like slamming a chair on the fucking. <laughs> I go, Hurry up. Ting, ting, ting. And Mole Man sitting there with his hand, like trying to type the music on the laptop trying to type with one hand but like trying to like shield himself with the other hand because he's so fucking terrified <laughs> he was so fucking scared when they finally changed him out of there he does something else now i think he's merch but yeah he was fucking terrified <laughs> he got his brain scrambled he's not running my merch That's... <laughs> no no he's, oh he's back God, there for so fucking funny yeah But yeah, I mean, those are some of the the worst incidents, I guess. But it's nothing I don't know major. If I consider the Hans Molman. I don't consider I'd consider the Hans Molman a worst incident. Well, you know, it's pretty bloody. But I mean, not as bloody as anything you're ever involved with with meat in a hardcore match. So exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stop fucking up. Yeah, I guess that's it. Or. Just don't be a part of the show. Go go be a fan, you know? But, yeah. So, I mean, a couple of fights and incidents like that. But that's commonplace. It's just, that's just the fucking business. Yeah. So, i never seen anyone stabbed in the showers or anything like that. We've never had anything like that happen. No, 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 no. So, I mean, it's nothing that would ever make it on Dark Side of the Ring. But. No. Yeah. So, which is coming back for another season, I found out. Interesting. Canyon yeah, Canyon's gonna be a part of it. Uh, Canyon Brian Pillman's like the first episode. Pillman, yeah. So it's gonna be interesting. I don't know how many have come up yet, but like I said, we just talked about Canyon being one of my they, favorite. So they uh, released the whole like uh, season lineup, and there's I can't remember what it was, but I remember a couple of them being uh, interesting. Hold on, I, I just remember. If it. only we had a way. I'm already on it. <laughs> if only I had a way. So we got right in front of me. Uh, Brian Pillman would be one. Um, Jesus, are you? Did you? I'm hoping you're on the same website that I'm at because uh, Saturn one. Com. Yeah, I'm on it too. <laughs> Is that Saturn? <laughs> That's Saturn. It looks like. Oh, no, he doesn't have the same no. tattoo. Oh, never mind. Sorry, Where Saturn. I know Saturn's got oh, kind of a. Man. Yeah, a a giant bald man who looks like he is ready to receive a blowjob. Isn't that Bruiser Let Bedlam? Oh, they talk about it later. Yeah, Bruiser Bedlam. Um. Uh, okay, so they got Brian, Flying Brian. If him, you got it. Yeah, which we just talked about, which would be interesting. Yeah. We just yeah. Nick Gage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. ooh, they're doing the collision in Korea. Yeah. And uh, WCW and New Japan Pro Wrestling 95. This is huge. That'd that would be, be good one. the Smith family, which is fucked up. I mean, 
Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely want to hear about Grizzly Smith walking in and fucking 13 year old girls. Yeah, that's fucking terrible. So, and then uh, Bruiser Bedlam. So that's that's something to look forward to if you want to know some of that real dark side of shit. Nothing that I've ever seen. Uh, when does it premiere? Does it say? Does it say? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't notice the, the Collision Korea episode. Now I'm super excited for this. Yeah, that's going to be kind of crazy. Uh, that show's very well done as far as getting people it that is. were there and getting them I, to talk candidly. I love, like, the 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 uh, out of focus actors that they get who kind of look like people. Oh the, yeah, they're supposed to be playing. Yeah, when they when they reenact. I think out of out of focus, Paul Heyman was the best one. No, oh. <laughs> I remember the the Hulk Hogan one was kind of like, no, nah, that dude's not big enough. <laughs> They'd have to blur it a lot more. But yeah, that, there's been some good episodes. The New Jack one where you can actually talk to the dude. <laughs> He's fucking just telling you what happened. That motherfucker yeah. mouth off and motherfucker get stabbed. That's what the fuck happened. <laughs> I was just, like, I that's... Now I don't go through that state anymore. <laughs> it's like a new jack right there. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think I don't think the Nick Gage one is gonna be as good as as New Jack because I don't think Nick J Nick Gage is as interesting as a person. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard Canyon from somewhere, so that's why I'm like, where's that one at, you know? But, I don't know, XPW would be interesting, because I, if you guys don't know about XPW, there was some, it was almost like a fucking mafia, the way that that shit was run. Because you got the fucking porn king sitting there bankrolling it, cutting off people's fingers and shit, so yeah. that's going to be an interesting one. So, like, yeah, because... Uh... Who who was it? The Messiah, who yeah. was a great worker. I watched a bunch of his old matches. Was apparently sleeping with a uh, dude's wife, so he hired a bunch of guys. At first, they were gonna cut off his, <laughs> they were gonna cut off his dick. Cut off your Johnson. Ended up cutting off. <laughs> That's exactly where my <laughs> mind went. We cut off your Johnson, Lebowski. He had three. He had three. <laughs> he had three <laughs> German men come in with a ferret. <laughs> While Messiah was in a bathtub. Yeah, <laughs> smoking a doob. <laughs> you, you'll cut off. You'll cut off my what? We cut off your Johnson. <laughs> One of them looks surprisingly like a member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, but you know. <laughs> and That's Satan exactly from uh, Constantine, but yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> That's exactly why, like, as soon as I was explaining the story. When they were cutting off the the dick, that's why I laughed. Is because my mind exactly went to Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like what happened too. <laughs> what? So they they sent in a Except bunch of guys to it's fucking sadder because the dude lost <laughs> his thumb. <laughs> yeah, so they sent in a bunch of guys because like this guy's a porn king. He's almost like a kingpin, and he sends these people in there to fuck him up, and they fucking cut off his thumb. So, yeah, that <laughs> XPW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been that would have just fucking done it right there. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, so it looks like uh, next season is going to be pretty interesting. But for some reason, the Chinese guy peed on Messiah's rug. It was weird. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, it it totally tied the room together. <laughs> so that's why harsh went feelings. Over, went over to the porn king's house and just stole another rug. <laughs> yeah, he said, "Take anyone you want." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a that great down. movie too <laughs> big lebowski anybody that is a great movie it pissed me off that's at first because they marketed it totally different than what it was so i went into it thinking it was going to be like the slapstick comedy like fucking stoner comedy movie and that's not what it was you know like all they showed was like the like him running the car into a telephone pole and then somebody throwing a coffee cup at his head. And, you know, that, those were the scenes that were in it. And I was like, okay. So I, initially when I saw it, I fucking hated it. Because it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But upon further I, watches, it got a lot better. No, I had the exact same story to where, like, I didn't think it was going to... Like, I, I heard about how good this movie was. And I watched it. And then I was like, that wasn't as good as I thought it was, uh, it would be. But, like, for some reason, I kept watching it more times and, like... The little nuances of everything just kind of came 
came through. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many now lines. I'm an official dudist and I'm ordained to uh, marry people. So fucking sweet, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, we need to find a Lebowski Fest and somehow make our way there. We really do. Because that would be um, awesome. I mean, like, we, I we, want, we get V to shave because... shave his head and wear aviators and he could be fucking Walter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just have him run around yeah. screaming about Shabbos. <laughs> I don't roll on Shabbos. Yeah, we, we gotta get him. We gotta get him a dog, and no matter what the dog is, we just gotta call it a Pomeranian. <laughs> it's got fucking papers, dude. <laughs> if you leave it alone, it stresses oh, out, and it's hair <laughs> over the line, Smokey. Market is zero. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna end the show like this fuck it we're gonna go watch the big lebowski fuck y'all see you later <laughs> hour, we're just gonna be us talking about the big lebowski now <laughs> oh shit oh my god uh, well this dreadful I movie totally see. i'm sure you can guess what I happens totally next he fixes Jonathan. the cable <laughs> <laughs> he fixes the cable this is the, all the lines of that movie. Yeah, that was fucking great. <laughs> anyway, oh my god, uh, what we get? We got he nothing goes, else. He, he goes to Jackie Treehorn's place and he fucking scribbles over the lines and just a do. Jackie Treehorn just draws a dude with a massive penis. <laughs> He's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Um. So on another note, another show note, we've got new countries that are tuning in. So uh, oh, cool, really? our friends to I'm the sure north. I love the big Lebowski chat. Well, you know, our friends to the north have finally gotten on board. So thank you, Canada. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know what took so long. That might be. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about, but uh, they're there, so that's good. Oh, and then, lost. ah, they're gone. Okay. Canada, we're sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I sorry. Even. And uh, Puerto Rico, which I guess isn't another country technically, but it's... I didn't know they had the technology. Well, you string together enough coconuts and you can get radio reception. I learned that from Gilligan's Island. So That's true. And we just lost Puerto Rico. Yeah, All right, there you go. Gilligan's Island. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Savio Vega, thank you for listening. And... The, the, that's all I know of the destroyer, I guess, from Puerto Rico. I don't uh, know. The, the dude who killed uh, Bruiser Brody. That's destroyer, wasn't it? Or destroyer two? Was it destroyer? I don't know. Jorge Jorge Gonzalez. Yeah, fuck that guy. He's like a national hero in Puerto Rico. Can you believe that shit? Well, because I guess he's when he stabbed Bruiser Brody, he sold it as he was defending himself from the big giant American bully. Yeah. It's, I mean, that was a, a whole episode of uh, <laughs> Dark Side of the Ring. So, yeah, if Bring you guys don't in. know about Bring that, yeah, in. there you go. It's like we're professionals we're professional. and shit. So, uh, have you ever read his biography or anything? Jorge's? No, Bruiser Brody. I didn't know he had a biography. Yeah, I guess it was written... By his wife and him, like he had started one and his wife finished it and stuff. So I was I gonna know. assume he didn't write it. Yeah, and then I was stabbed and I died. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, I don't he think he wrote did. this. I don't think he wrote this. <laughs> but yeah, crazy shit that happens in wrestling. I mean, yeah. Dark Side of the Rings fucking covered most of it, but still pretty crazy. Fucking Bruiser Brody was the Undertaker's first opponent. I think. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, which listen to Taker talk about that match is fucking hilarious. Yeah. I Taker got in there fucking greenhorn rookie trying to call spots with bruiser fucking Brody. <laughs> you can imagine what happened after that. <laughs> I legit like I legit dolphin laughed when Taker was telling the story and he said, I'm looking across the ring at Brody. I'm thinking, I'm bigger than he is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. How many you've had guys who it was their first matches before, right? Okay, yeah, I used not, to be okay. like the 
I used to be the uh, what the like the the measuring post for the rookies coming in. Yeah. So I mean, if if you had a guy who has been hanging around the locker room and you know, kind of like cleaning up and you know, just trying to get their foot in the door there and then try to fucking start that kind of shit with you you do the same thing right oh yeah oh yeah yeah it, it's it's a thing in the business i probably wouldn't so. i probably wouldn't explode a chair on his chest but it yeah <laughs> I've, I've only had maybe a handful of first time people um one of them was uh fuck was his name red um he was wearing a mask at the time the red. Yeah, the Northwest Assassin. Oh, oh, uh, Ernie. Ernie, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I remember I, that. Yeah. So, I mean, luckily with all the ones that I've had, they've been really good. And just, like, I get more panic out of people for their first time than I'm going to fucking be a ring general right now. <laughs> so, it's a lot different situation. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit, what? Oh shit, I gotta carry darkness through a match my first time. And you know what, fucker? If they didn't fucking trust you, they wouldn't give you a rook. <laughs> so don't give me that shit. But... <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting. You know, you get a first-timer and, and have them fucking go off on you. Alright, I'm gonna close on you. Like, no, fucker, you're not. <laughs> this is what we're doing today, kid. <laughs> I had a guy... I mean, you know who it is and everything, but I I do the the old school, and oh yeah, I I I, I walk the top rope and I club the guy in the back, and then he's like, okay, do it again, but this time I'll pull you. I was like, what? No, fuck you! Nah. What the fuck? Like, why would I go back and do it again? Like, you only get one of those in a match, fucker. <laughs> you don't go back and do that shit, so you usually, can pull me off. Usually, usually when they'll do shit like that, um, I'll just like. Cause, we're pulling the curtain behind. We're talking to each other the whole time. So the rookie will usually try to do something. I'll, no, 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 no. Shut up. That's stupid. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, Ernie was the last rookie that I had. He was good. I liked it. It was a good match for him being his first one. Sad to see him go, but you know. Um, there was the time like uh, Max Brooks. I think that was his name. Uh, I thought I broke his arm once. No oh, shit. Was it his rookie he, one or? Yeah, it was one of his one of his first matches, and like, I called it like, uh, duck the line, go for the crossbody. I'm gonna catch you and hit you with. I don't know the technical name for it, so I always just say swinging rock bottom. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, uh, a finisher. Yeah, well, sort of. Oh okay. I, ca I catch him with it. And then I go for it, but the motherfucker puts his arm back, mm. and I shit. just feel his arm. Cr I feel his arm crumple. I was like, "Holy shit, are you all right?" He's like, "Yeah, all right." Well, I'm gonna tune you up because that was stupid. And now you made me worried about you. <laughs> I had a, a match where the finish was. Uh, I did cattle mutilation, yeah. or no? But yeah, the the Daniel Bryant double underhook flip over, blah 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 blah. So I do that. I don't do that because of this incident right here. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. So I told I told the guy I showed I explained everything. I told him what the finish was. He was okay with it. As I put his arms in the in the double arms, I put my neck and my head into his back and I flip. As I flip, he was high as fuck too. As I flip, mm. he stiffens his arm up and it it mm. dislocates his arm as I go over and it just <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit." And he starts screaming. And I was like, "Oh, Fuck. And I'm supposed to lose the match. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> Jesus. And I'm just like, he's screaming and I'm like, I don't know what to fucking do. And I was just like, I don't, what the fuck do you do at this point? <laughs> That's what you do. So yeah, I dislocated his arm. And then like, right after that match is when they put the heavy restrictions on drug use on the fucking locker room that maybe two people fucking paid attention to. <laughs> so Was that in BCW? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I don't remember that. Yeah, I fucking it was on what the, I think our first pay per view, first or second. I think you, I think you still do that move though, because just because one guy who was high fucked it up, it's stop doing it. Yeah, but you see, it's like once you hurt somebody like that, 
it, it, it kind of makes you gun shy, you know. No, I get it. So I, I don't catch people on the outside of the ring anymore, and I don't fucking do that move. <laughs> so <laughs> I remember the night fucking uh, just excited. He's like, "Do it!" I was like, "No!" Oh. He's like, "I weigh ninety eight pounds, fucker, do it!" I was like, "I don't want to." <laughs> and then, like, this is the first time I ever caught somebody after I broke my leg. He comes flying out at me. And he jumps, and I just fucking catch him. And I, I was like two seconds from like, oh shit! I'm like, I was supposed to fall back with this, and I'm holding him. I caught his fucking dive like from the outside of the ring, <laughs> from the inside too. to the. Other. And I was like, Rick, my eyes or something. He's like, motherfucker! <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know where to go from here. Fucking elbow me or something. So yeah, I, I mean. What, but once you get over it, you got to go through it again. And, you know, yeah. so maybe doing I cattle think, mutilation again could be a thing. I think, I think you should. I think it'd be a good move for you. And, like, I've d I, I've accidentally hurt people before. I still, well, except the time I hit someone with a baseball bat. But. Well, yeah. It's funny as I had to come up with a fucking submission hold that I could do on anybody when V and I had our feud because I couldn't hit him with any of my fucking moves, many of my finishers. So I was like, I'll just do the cattle mutilation. And I hit him with it. Fine, so. That's why I stick with the, uh, stuck with the stroke. Cause yeah, I, you can. Especially com coming in with, coming into the business, I wasn't like a big guy. Yeah. You can hit anyone with that one. That and the, yeah. the fucking, uh, the, the flatliner and, you know, stuff like that. DDT. Oh. I mean, you can hit all kinds I, of shit like that. I'm using the Rainmaker now just because it's so fucking cool looking. Rainmaker. Who does it? Uh, Okada and uh, Jimmy Havoc do it. Okada. There you go. Yeah. that's. I just heard what it was and I was like, who fucking... Okay. Yeah. I remember just seeing that recently. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it on, right, on a public forum. I am such a dirty Okada mark. <laughs> nice. Which, by the way, I hate fucking that pro wrestling is the one sport that like once you're in the business you can't be a fan of it anymore <laughs> yeah it, it's kind of interesting some of the the shit that's come down because someone was a fan i remember like somebody lost all credibility in the locker room i mean not just because of this incident but because of other shit that they pulled but they were overheard saying okay so i was playing wwe 2k and i want to do this move on you <laughs> it was no that they lost, lost the, credibility before that. That's what I say. I said not only this, but this was one of the big ones that lost him all that, credibility. That, so that didn't help his cause. He was losing <laughs> credibility way before that. <laughs> yeah. So that's different than being a fan. But, yeah. I mean, like I, I kind of hate it when guy when like name guys come to smaller promotions and everybody marks out and has to get pictures with them. I don't like. I don't do that. But like. I only did it once, and it was it was early in my career, so don't give me shit. And it was Matt fucking Hardy, so leave me alone. <laughs> oh, sorry. Jump over that name I just dropped. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Calm down, bad blood. Oh, fuck. Well, we've had people in the locker room. Like, I went up and I shook Sullivan's hand. I was like, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. I didn't go near fucking Honky Talk, man, because I know he's not a happy person, so... <laughs> <laughs> no. I just, yeah. I mean, I never cold shouldered a fucking legend like Roddy Piper, like some people, but, you know. It was an accident. <laughs> yeah. In my defense, he was a lot shorter in person than I ever expected. Isn't that funny, though? Like, people you don't expect to be small are, and people that you think are huge are like, what the fuck? Who's this guy? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Go on again for another fucking half hour about wrestling, or we can, you know, call it a night. <laughs> we'll have a bonus pot of just us okay. talking wrestling. <laughs> well, we're, I was kind of pitching that idea. Not yeah. To put too much out on the air, but I'm, in, well, I'm into that idea. Yeah, I yeah, I wanted to almost do it. Like I, I came so close to talking to you guys. I'm like, are any of you guys watching the Rumble? And just to see if we could, like, do a, a bonus pod of us watching the Rumble and just talking while it's happening or something like that. But I didn't do it. I, I, so. Well, we should do. 
you, you fucking bitch. Um, <laughs> we should do like a, a Facebook Live something like that. One yeah, time. that'd be interesting. Like a a, a DVD commentary track, <laughs> but we're watching wrestling. So, like, all right, start yeah. the event now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you know. So we we're not actually showing the show or watching the movie as it's on, but you can play this while you're watching it. So, yeah, that would be kind of fun. A couple times, do commentaries. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fun. Just fucking make you watch the Lost Boys. Fucking hate everything about it. <laughs> oh man. Maybe maybe the Big Lebowski. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we'll do the big lebowski. Yeah. I want to listen to you cry while I just shit all over the Lost Boys. <laughs> I'm gonna have your wife in the room that so she can come up and smack you whenever you. <laughs> you said she, that's like one of her favorite movies too, right? Yeah, that's one of her favorite movies too. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Fuck off, Stack. <laughs> you just hear in the background. I'll, I'll... <laughs> I'll tell her to shut up too. <laughs> No, you, you shut up. <laughs> I just had to open the door to make sure she wasn't in the next room to hear me. <laughs> you had to make sure the door was closed. Uh, I tell her, it's locked, it's fine. Uh, go fuck yourself. That's what I tell her. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, back to other things. <laughs> you ever see that fucking uh, Key and Peele skit where they're like talking about their wives? Hey, hey Ron. And they're like, what? Oh. No, 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 not A Ron. You <laughs> fucking moron. No, I know. I, Key and Peele is the first thing I think of. No, they're, like they're the talk. They're like, oh yeah, I was talking to my wife, and she tried to give me lip, and then I looked at her and I said, and then they pause and like look around, and they go, oh yes. yeah. <laughs> what I say. <laughs> I do remember that one. But you do that? You do that? You called her? You called her a bitch? I'm like, oh, uh, oh yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> yes, I do remember that one. But I remember A. A. Ron even more. Now the one, like, the Key and Peele skit that always like uh, came to my mind was uh, when like is like it was like you don't see black people at an orgy or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't remember this one. No. It was just uh, Key Key, and he was just like, "All right, well, everybody's having sex now, and I'm gonna, I'm trying to leave, and you guys are all laying on my coat." Oh, and someone pops a thumb in his mouth. And he's like, "Oh, that that only tastes kind of tastes like salty butthole." <laughs> no, I did not see this one. <laughs> I have to go back okay. to the archives. I'd like to welcome to everybody to uh, Zach and Darkness's ADD corner. By the way, <laughs> we've jumped around quite a bit when we weren't having any subject to focus on it went from big lebowski to bruiser brody to fucking key and peel <laughs> <laughs> i think I, johnson. <laughs> Mafia johnson it's like if we don't have v here to like make us get you know focused then we just go off on these random fucking things it's the fucking add corner <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so what do you say? Is that it? We good? Hey, let's wrap it up before, <laughs> before we, <laughs> we should go off on another off. tangent. Why did you guys have a three hour show? I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, next week, if you guys choose to read uh, American Gods, the comic, don't don't read the book. Don't watch the show. Read the comic and uh, we'll review it. Uh, reveal just talk about it for about five minutes and we'll try to gloss over I'm not, it i'm not telling b but i'm reviewing the show <laughs> and uh yeah watch wandavision because we'll be talking about that actually when you're listening to this remember to go watch wandavision right after friday mornings i know this is the first thing you're all getting to do mm -hmm. uh, your friday your your dark asylum pod is dropped it's a good day. And then you got WandaVision when you get home from work. So there you go. But uh, yeah, so for uh, wonderful Zach Winters. I cut off your Johnson. And for Big V. This is Darkness. And the asylum is closed. <laughs>